Leicester's indoor market was built in 1973, closed in 2014 and was demolished in 2015. Not many people mourned its going, but this video celebrates a building that had a lot to like, even if it had run out of steam by the end of its life. There has been a market in this part of Leicester since at least the end of the 13th century. For many years, this was the large open space in the town where civic events and meetings could be held. It was only in the 1930s that a permanent roof was created and the character of the market area changed. By the 1960s, it had a roof that was likened to that of a train station and the council decided something should be done. The roots of the indoor market come from plans drawn up in the early 1960s to redevelop the market in the face of the declining use of city centre shopping facilities. At various points, there were ideas to move the whole market to Lowesby Lane, to create a multi-storey car park and a bowling alley on top of Lowesby Lane and Silver Street, to have a piazza in front of the Corn Exchange, and to have a focal point in the piazza, such as a fountain, sculpture or bandstand. The plans for Lowesby Lane caused a lot of protest, and other than the present small area in front of the Corn Exchange, not many of these plans were implemented. As well as the protests from the public and market traders, in the 1970s planning policy had started to shift from redevelopment to improvement. The historic value of areas in the city was becoming more appreciated than in the past, and the marketplace, including Silver Street and Lowesby Lane, became a conservation area in 1974. A new indoor market had been planned from the beginning, and as can be seen on these models, it was to occupy the area behind the Corn Exchange. A number of buildings were demolished, including the Bull's Head, the White Swan and the Corridor, which was the only shopping arcade not to survive the redevelopments of the 1960s and 1970s. The new building was designed and engineered by the City Council, with Sir Robert McAlpine and Sons as the contractors. The contract value of the building was £1.6 million. Externally, the materials used were red Accrington brick matching red ceramic tiles with some areas of exposed concrete. Red tiles and Accrington red brick were popular in the 1970s and fitted in with the red brick character of Leicester, although the red colour doesn't really look a lot like local brick. This was a big building shoehorned into a tight space. As you can see from this cross section, the upper floors were stepped back so that the building didn't dominate the surrounding area as much as it might have, although in places it did loom over the streets. There were lots of entrances to the market, so it was very easy to walk in and out, although it wasn't always obvious which level you were on. You went down to the toilets, and then above there were four levels for shopping, with offices above these. Level 1 was for stalls, level 2 for food, and levels 3 and 4 for a mix of stalls and cafes. The market was divided into two main halls, and it was designed to try and emulate the best features of a traditional market. When this video was shot, the top levels of the indoor market were pretty much empty, with only a few businesses remaining. There was no hint of the hustle and bustle of earlier years. It had a deserted feel to it and was quiet. Here you can see how it was possible to look down into the food hall. The blue columns were designed to give the feel of the Victorian steel columns of the old fish market from where some of the stool holders had been moved. Some of these stall holders have moved on to the outdoor market, while others have left the market completely. This was also the only place in Leicester where travelators were built. Traffic planners in the 1960s envisaged monorails, electric rickshaws, 
walkways that separated pedestrians from traffic and moving pavements, or travelators, like those in airports. Along with a few overhead walkways at the Haymarket Centre and St Nicholas Circle, these were the only examples of these ideas that actually got made. The food hall was on level two, which was confusing if you came in straight off the street at what seemed to be street level. By the time the building was demolished, most people were happy with the idea of moving to a new purpose-built food hall. The other stalls were on level one and were a mix of confectionery, books, records, cameras and all sorts of odds and ends. The thing I liked about the indoor market was that it was confusing, but in a good way. If you didn't know the layout, you were never sure which level you were on or how to get to the level you wanted to be on. You could see up or down half a floor, seeing people's feet or heads passing by. This for me was the fun of the building. Looking at the new open space, it seems amazing that so much could have been fitted into such a small footprint. At the time it was built, the indoor market was a part of long-term plans to try and keep shoppers in the city centre. Along with the Haymarket Centre, it was intended to lure people away from the out-of-town shopping areas like Woolco in Oadby and some years later, Foss Park. It started as a thriving, bustling shopping centre, but by the start of the 21st century, shopping patterns had changed, and at the time of demolition, it had pretty much outlived its usefulness. The new square looks back to the days when the market was an open space. It looks good and should be around for a long time to come. I do miss the travelators, though. <laughs>